This love-hate relationship with DIY A2E e-drums sadly ends here for this channel, at least for now. It has served its purpose and like all good things, it has come to an end. My name is Joven and welcome to Project Beats. Just a quick one, if you'd like to support this channel, best way is by subscribing, liking and commenting and all that good stuff. I appreciate y'all. Okay, that intro was a bit dramatic. Don't get me wrong, I think the advancement in tech we are seeing in the e-drums as well as A2E parts that has been coming out is amazing. They certainly serve as valuable tools for many drummers and educators dealing with noise issues. I don't really hate it, I'm just moving on from it. This is a quick update for you guys that have been following and looking for e-drums and DIY videos from this channel. But before I tell you why I moved away from it, let me clarify a few things. I actually have another A2E kit that I haven't shown in this channel. I still use that on the daily. I don't play it personally, but the kids that I'm teaching, they are the ones using it. That kit still works well, built around the same time as my A2E kit with simpler and cheaper components. I'm still very open to trying different e-drums and tech if given the opportunity. I'm still thinking of putting out e-drum reviews and A2E setup suggestions here and there. I'd be happy to answer questions and maybe do Q&A follow-up video to this one if you guys like. Uh, just let me know in the comments. Here are some of the reasons why I moved on. Main reason is I can actually play acoustic drums now. Most of us go with A2E route for noise level concerns. I have graduated with this issue and I can record and play drums anytime actually for a while now. I'll show you my current setup in a bit but as I've mentioned in previous videos, I have moved my recording setup from my house to my workplace where I teach and have a relatively easy setup where I just turn on camera, lights and interface and record. That means no more setting up and tearing down soundproofing materials every time I record which if you are turning 40, <laughs> believe me is not fun. You're already beat and you haven't started anything. The second thing for me is I've come to realize and accept it's not for me. This is just my personal opinion. I know not everyone will agree, but I have found that I have reached the limit of its usefulness. If you're working on touch, other subtle techniques, dynamics, etc. I'm not saying A2E doesn't work. It just comes with inherent limitations no matter how good the setup and module is. And due to the DIY nature, something is bound to fail much faster than a well-engineered branded e-drums. For some of you, maybe it's perfectly fine. I guess it depends on how you play. But for me, the constant adjustment, tweaks, repairs, and upgrades in the quest for the perfect responsive setup have reduced its overall usefulness. I've realized that electronic and acoustic drums are two very different instruments, each serving a specific purpose. Trying to chase and emulate acoustic drums on a DIY e-drum started to be really expensive with diminishing returns, if any. Last reason why is I am broke. Hey, you know, broke but bougie. <laughs> I needed to purchase an SPD SX Pro, this guy. Around a year ago, but it's not financially feasible for me to afford both. So I had to sell some items and I had to let the Roland TD-17 module go. That's the brain for my A2E eDrums. If you're following eDrums news and what brands are doing and the technology that we have now, I actually think it's amazing, but to get to a great performing and sounding eDrums, you have to pay for it which starts to make no sense for me for what I needed to do. Some of these kits can actually pay for the soundproofing and you still have money left over for decent drums and cymbals. What I'm trying to say is I'm refining my setup to achieve my goals as a drummer. While e-drums can be fantastic, I find them limiting. I remain a big fan of traditional drums 
because of their complexity, character, nuances, and how it reacts to different hits and techniques. Aspects that are often imperfect or completely absent on e-drums, regardless of price. Having to adjust my playing style to mimic some of these things on an e-drums is not it for me. However, this is just my perspective and what I personally seek in a drum to reach my playing goals. So as it stands, I'm moving forward. With that being said, let me show you what my current setup is. Okay, this is gonna be a plug style tour, very quick tour. So, mixing desk, editing desk, some other things there. It's a bit messy at the moment, so I'm not gonna uh, pan there too much. A lot of things going on. Um, okay, so if I move here, and I have my Tama True Touch training kit. This is this thing is amazing. I did a review of this. We'll be doing a, a longer term overview with the rubber Simons, that's why I'm using there. Perfect setup, very quiet practice, great feel, very close to an actual drums. And then here I have an actual drums. This is just a tiny setup that I'm using for live looping at the moment. Um, this is a very small kit, so even if I don't put up sound isolation thing, um, it works well. So yeah, SPD SX Pro, tiny kick drum. I made a video about that. My DIY sub sub mic and the and the kick mic right there. I don't know if you can see that snare, mini grab, of course. Previous A to E kit. It's now just on storage. Um, I use that for when I have gigs that needs acoustic drums. That's it. Symbols. There are all the mess there. So you don't want to see that. Right. So that's that for my home setup. I have a practice solution there. Put my reps in. And then at work, I do my recording. All right, so just a quick tour of my drum setup. This is the main reason why I only have the Tama True Touch at home, because I have access to this. This is my, this is my drums, I put it here in my workplace. So yeah, I'll give you a, a quick rundown of the, the drums. I try to clean up a bit, but uh, forgive the mess. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, the Sonor, Vintage kit is here. It's the Benny spec. I have the 20 inch kick, 16 floor tom, 10 tom. These are just uh, from the old drums that I was using to teach. I just added it here just for teaching sake because um, some student need four or five toms or whatnot. This is my solution for those songs that need a small drum. So the DW small tom. Space saving solution. And then the other floor tom is out there. I just move that here when I am teaching my grade 8 and diploma students. Here I have the FP9 Yamaha and then a uh, low boy beater. Speed Cobra for now because they look alike but I will definitely get the new FP9 um, hi-hat from Yamaha. Um, if you notice the black curtains that's the one that I use and then cymbals. Um, I have the Benny Crasher hats that's 6 inch Random stacks, Pisans, Pisans, just China and, and Splash, CRX, uh, Bright Ride, that's Zildjian, if you can still see the mark, it's very old Zildjian. Minor Classics, works really well, Pantheon Symbols, Pantheon Symbols, local brand here in Singapore. So he have some uh, friction pole right there, space saving one, so just to eliminate um, stands. I probably will put some uh, overhead miking there for recording as well. For kick mic, I have the AKG D12 right there. It's a bit dark, but yeah. You see this um, uh, music stand for teaching? Of course, I need that. I just use um, a clamp to, to get that there. Space saving solutions. And, and this other one is an e-drum conversion. Um, that I did the same time I did the one at home. This has been working really great for me. The rim shot doesn't really behave quite the way I want it to do. But for the rest of it, the toms, the kick, for the kick drum, I also used the side mounted uh, trigger, internal side mounted. These are Joe Becky, I think Joe Becky heads, if I'm not wrong. So a very cheap solution. But yeah, this is for the kids. It's much lower. As you can see, the seat is right there. For younger kids, these are uh, DIY E symbols as well. I just put that there. This is doing nothing. I just, you know, I'm just keeping it there. <laughs> All right. So the brain is TD9. 
that's how you can save uh, if you are doing your A2E, just a TD9 module. Okay, a demo of the the lighting set setup. And then normally I would put down my ISO to about there, let's say right around there. And then turn off the main lights. There you go. Black backgrounds. If you guys have questions about camera setup and how to do that, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, to help with that as well. So basically that's what I do. And then I have this RGB um, lights. Yeah, there you go. So add a bit of a uh, splash of color in the background. But yeah, that's usually how I record my videos, my drum covers. For recording, I use this uh, Zoom H6 Black. Normally I just use snare, tom one, and then floor tom kick. So all of those go in here, kick, snare, tom one, tom two. That's it, I don't really use this mic for my covers, but yeah. And then uh, an overhead XY would be built into the Zoom H6. No one really can notice the quality uh, difference when it's in a cover uh, and, and also mixed. I feel like this really does the job for me. And then I have it plugged to a snake that I DIY'd. Uh, one would be my kick. There's a number there. You can see in the if it focuses. There's a number there on the cable. It's very discreet as well. So I just need to remember one is kick, two is near, at least for my setup. Three and four would be Tom 1 and Tom 2. The, it's also color coded as well, so but just two colors, so orange and black. See there, that's orange. Yeah. At the moment, it's there, but I, I normally make this and 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 that. And then this would be pointed around here, behind. Alrighty, if you guys have any uh, questions about the setup, let me know. So that's how it is at the moment. So yeah, this isn't the best setup still, but it is certainly better than before for my specific needs. Ideally, of course, you'd have everything in one place, but I'm still renting. Nothing has changed and the rental market in Singapore is higher than ever. Hopefully, of course, this brings me one step closer to an in-house studio but this will do for now. That's about it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment your questions down below and see you in the next project.